Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our General Assembly for March 26, 2021. I know, as usual, we start with music, but to change the tempo a bit this morning, for Marvel Providence, I will get into the groove and then. Okay. All right, all right, we are a warrior, we are a conqueror in the name of the Lord. Indeed, it's a privilege and honor this morning to welcome our guest speaker. She, Reverend Marie Burbick, is a minister of the gospel, ordained by and serving as a pastor with Touching Your World Ministries, located in Queens, New York. She's also an author, communications consultant, corporate trainer, personal coach, and empowerment speaker 
who has a passion for helping others. She's a pioneer having created the first marketing program on Jamaican radio and successfully affected Jamaica's first ornamental fish expo in 2006, for which she received an award for outstanding public relations and event planning services. She's a two-time national journalism awards winner, having won a certificate of a merit award in 1998 for agriculture reporting. And in 2008, she was the first winner of the award for online journalism sponsored by Microsoft. She's a, one of us. She's a past student of Frankfurt High School, having attended institution from 1988 to 1993. She served as head girl from 92 to 93 and a former Miss Fern Court. Reverend Marie Burbick, welcome. I'm going to make you a co-host now. Welcome back to Fern Court again. Wonderful. Good morning. Good morning to you, Mr. Thomas, and good morning to the staff and students at Ferncourt High School. It is a pleasure, a pleasure to be back with you. Okay, it's, now it's over to you now. Awesome. Wonderful. Wonderful. Can I just say labo wink it? Mm. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I remember those days. Good morning, Ferncourt family. How is everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. Thank God it's Friday. Wow. You know, I remember when I, I was in school, Friday was my favorite day. I think it's a favorite day for a lot of students, actually. But for me, I used to look forward to Friday. You know why? It's not because it's the end of the week in terms of school, but I didn't have to iron any more uniform for the week. I didn't like to iron. And those days we were wearing the pleated skirts. I think you're still doing that now. Yes, and yes. The way that we used to do it you had to make sure that those pleats were sitting pretty. <laughs> and okay. ironing is not my thing. <laughs> ironing is not my thing. So I really look forward to Friday when I didn't have to iron those skirts anymore. Because, you know, those days when the pleats were sitting down, it would remind you of, you know, the old Victorian ladies, the fans that they used to have, the paper fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is how our pleats used to have to sit down. Anyway, to God be the glory. Great Amen. things he has done. <laughs> yes, it's Friday, March 26, 2021, and I'm happy to join you in your devotions this morning. For those persons who are not familiar with me, I'm Reverend Marie Burbick, and as your principal would have told you, I am a past student, head girl in, uh, I think it was 92 to 93. Yes, I left there in 93, and Miss Frankfurt, 1992. So I just want to greet everybody who is on this morning. And I pray that you will give me just a few minutes to share with you on excellence. Excellence. Amen. Amen. I'm truly honored to have your attention. And I just want to bring you greetings, everybody from Queens, New York. I'm in Queens right now. Just want to bring you greetings and share with you briefly on excellence. And not just excellence for me, but the spirit of excellence. That's where I want to take your attention to this morning. As we approach the Easter holidays, it is an excellent time to reflect on excellence because Jesus was crucified and resurrected during the Easter season. And if you want a great example of excellence, Jesus showed us how to be excellent in life. So, you know, my alma mater, Ferncourt, is an institution that knows excellence. I can tell you that between 1988, when I started, up to 1993, when I was a student there, we were exposed to excellence through our principal at the time, Mrs. Sharon Kelly, and through our teachers. So our students were always shining. And I know that today I'm looking on and I see that the tradition is continuing under Mr. Thomas and the current teachers who are there. With that said, let me just get to the meat of the matter because it is so easy to get carried away. I feel right at home. It's so easy to get carried away. Now, there is something called a spirit of excellence. It is a gift that God gives to us, and it causes us to stand out wherever we go. Whether it is in academics, it could be in athletics, it could be in drama, it could be in music, it could be in food and nutrition, it could be in art, you name it. There are people who perform with excellence in that area. Many of you watching me right now, you are carrying a spirit of excellence, but you call it by another name. I don't know, perhaps some persons may have said to you that you are bright, 
you know, because you're doing well in school, people will say you are bright because you're always on top of your class. But what is really upon your life is a spirit of excellence. The spirit of excellence is what is upon you, Sain Bolt. The spirit of excellence is what is upon Shelley and Fraser Price. The spirit of excellence was what was upon our own Novelin Williams Mills when she ran that memorable four by four anchor leg. If you remember, in 2015 at the World Championships, she overtook the American and took home the gold for Jamaica in the four by four. So people stand out academically. They will stand out in various disciplines. They will stand out in different sports. They will stand out in music. They will stand out in the arts. And when you see that happening, most of the time, these are people who carry what we call a spirit of excellence. It is that thing that it causes you to do well and it causes you to never settle for mediocrity. By the way, did I, did I just say mediocrity? <laughs> Let me share with you a little joke about that word. The first time I heard that word, it was spoken by Mrs. Um, Mullings our former vice principal, may her soul rest in peace. At the time I had asked Mrs. Mullings for a recommendation. So she wrote the recommendation and she gave me the letter. And when I was reading the letter, she had the word mediocrity in there. She said, she does not settle for mediocrity. She wrote that in the recommendations. So of course, at the time I didn't know what the word meant. So I ran to get my dictionary to look it up. So my understanding when I looked at that word, my understanding of the meaning was, you know, less than what is considered good quality. So that's mediocrity. Less than what is considered good quality. In those days, we use dictionary. Dictionary. These days, you guys, you use Google. Hello? <laughs> Everything you Google, we have to use a dictionary. So basically, my vice principal, Mrs. Mulling, she was saying at that time in that letter that I did not accept anything that was less than what is considered good quality. And that is a good perception for anybody to have of you, even as youngsters, even as students. It is a good perception for anybody to have of you. And it is as a result of that excellent spirit that you have. A spirit of excellence is what causes you to consistently perform at a high level, whether it's in your academics or in extracurricular activities. When you have a spirit of excellence, you distinguish yourself often without even trying. You don't even have to try because it's something that is upon your life. That excellence that you have, that excellence that you demonstrate, it comes naturally because it's a gift. Yes, it's a gift from God. It's not you, it's God. People with an excellent spirit, you will notice that they are achievers. People with an excellent spirit, you will notice they are go-getters. You can tell from pretty early on what is upon your life, by your attitude towards certain things, by your approach and by your drive. And you can tell even for your friends what is upon their life by observing them, how they approach their academics, their participation at school, their school life, their goals, and what they do each day when they come in. Let me share with you, the Bible says in Daniel 6 and verse three, it says that Daniel had a spirit of excellence. Let's read that quickly. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. So this is Daniel 6, chapter 6 and verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So you can see that an excellent spirit is something that God recognizes because he is the one who places it upon you. So when you carry that spirit of excellence, you stand out wherever you go. You stand out wherever you are placed. It doesn't matter if you are placed at a school in the inner city, in the ghetto, you're still gonna shine because an excellent spirit is upon you. You're still gonna stand out because there is something unique about you. The spirit of excellence, it cannot be hidden. It's like a light. Yeah, it's like a light, like this light that is right beside me here. It's like a light that is always shining and it cannot be covered. The Bible tells you anyway, in Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16, let me read for you quickly. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works 
and give glory to your father who is in heaven. So the Bible is recognizing that when there's excellence upon your life, there's a light that radiates from you. And no matter what, that light cannot be covered. That light has to shine. Amen? So an excellent spirit is the reason why some students, from the moment they arrive in first form, they do very well academically or in extracurricular activities straight through to fifth form. They just start doing well from first form straight through to fifth form. A spirit of excellence is a reason why their name is called so many times at prize giving ceremonies. That is why they're always walking away with prizes. A spirit of excellence is a reason why some parents, some students rather, are always being selected for leadership positions. They are selected as monitors, they are selected as student reps, they are selected as prefects, they are selected as club leaders, and some go on to become head girl or head boy. That same spirit of excellence will follow you into adulthood so that you will continue to shine. You shine in your careers, you shine if you are in ministry like myself, wherever you go in life. That spirit of excellence, it will rest upon you. It does not leave you. You continue to shine. And then you will realize too some of the supernatural benefits of the spirit of excellence that you carry. And when I say supernatural, it means that you don't comprehend it with a nat natural eye, with your natural understanding. It is something that God does. So you may find that you continue to occupy positions of leadership even into ad adulthood because others see something in you that gives them the confidence that you can lead them. You may find that we, what we call favor is upon you. Doors, doors of opportunity will just open for you. You don't have to search for certain opportunities. They present themselves to you. You may find also that you inspire others. I mean, for years, I used to post inspiring quotes on Facebook and on my other social media pages until people started messaging me and they said they look forward each day to the inspiring quotes that I would post on my page. They said it was positively impacting their lives. So you know what I did next? I went back through my post, all of those inspiring posts I made on Facebook, for example, and I gathered all of them and put them in a book. That is how I wrote my first book. I went back on Facebook, gathered all of the inspiring quotes, put them together. And in 2017, I published my first book. It's called Arise, Life Lessons and Inspirational Quotes from a Renaissance Woman. So people with an excellent spirit, you will inspire others and you will attract opportunities. And very important too is that people with a spirit of excellence, they don't accept defeat. They rise quickly from setback. You hit them down, they bounce right back. There's a Jamaican saying, you know, you've heard it, I'm sure, that means a hard bud for dead. Yes, people with a spirit of excellence, you're like a hard bud for dead. You're like a cat with nine lives. They hit you down today, but boom, tomorrow you're back up. That is one of the characteristics of people with a spirit of excellence. And last but not least, people with a spirit of excellence, they have a fighting spirit. I don't mean you go around school picking fights at all. No, no. I mean, the persons who have the spirit of excellence, they are very driven to the point where they don't allow anything to stop them from achieving what they set their minds to. Let me share with you a story very quickly so I can demonstrate that point. Back in 1992, when I won the title of Miss Frank Court, I won it because I was determined to win it. Mm -hmm. I was determined to win it because I wanted to prove some people wrong. I wasn't too bad to look at. You know, I wasn't too hard on the eyes, but I was no great beauty either. But when this boy came to me one day, he heard that I was about to enter the contest. And he came to me and he said, you can't win. You can't win because your leg's skinny. Your leg's them skinny, so you can't win. I don't know, maybe he should have just kept quiet because the moment he said that, it just brought out something in me. I was more determined than anything to prove to him that even though I had skinny legs, I could still win. So let me tell you what I did. First, I assessed my competition. All the other girls who were in the competition, I'm confessing today, I assessed you. I assessed you. What I did was I wanted to know their strengths and their weaknesses. So I sat down with pencil and paper and I wrote down everybody's name, 
everybody's strengths, everybody's weakness. Then I measured my chances against the different things that I knew they would score us on in the contest. I figured out my weak areas and I began to work on them. I remember in the evenings, I used to walk around the tank. In those days, we had a big concrete tank. Many of you know those tanks and that's where we got our water. So I would walk around that tank every evening when I went home from school because I'm practicing my walk. I didn't have anywhere else to practice. So I went home, I walk around the tank with my mom looking through the window like she was about to faint because she's thinking one day this girl's gonna fall in that tank. But I'm walking around that tank and I'm practicing my walk. And at the end of the day, that night of the competition, I went on with confidence because I had done my work. I had assessed the competition. I had prepared myself. I had improved myself in areas where I knew I was weak. I was prepared to win. And guess what? I won. So I'm saying that to say, people with a spirit of excellence have a fighting spirit. If you tell them they can't do something, it's best you don't say it because they're gonna do it. They're going to do it. So with that said, I wanna ask you this morning to take a moment to pause, self-reflect and see what is it that is upon your life? What is it that you carry? Is there an excellent spirit over your life? Sometimes you have an excellent spirit, but you need a mentor or you need somebody to push you. And some people, they are self-motivated, self-driven. They don't need anybody to push them. So I wanna to say to those of you who may need somebody to push you this morning, that this day, this morning, 26th of March, this is your push-off morning. This is your push-off day. I'm giving you a push this morning so that you can recognize what is upon your life and walk into that excellent spirit that you already have. This is your morning to ignite. This is your morning to step out. This is your morning to turn on the light. The light is already there, but this is your morning to turn it up. I pray that this brief word has blessed you. And I look forward to sharing with you again. Whenever your principal says, come, I will be ready. Mr. Thomas, it is back over to you. All right, thank you, Reverend Burbick, this morning. I would mind if you could just pray for us, the school, this morning. Bless the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks this morning. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We thank you that this is another day you have made and we are honored to be a part of it. Many didn't make it through to today. I thank you for the opportunity, God Almighty, to be a part of this devotion this morning for my alma mater. It is a privilege, it is an honor. Father God, I pray that you will remember the leadership of the school this morning, the principal, Mr. Thomas. Remember all the teachers, remember the vice principal, remember all the staff, ancillary staff, persons who work in the library, the offices. Cover them this morning and cover the students, mighty God. Cover them under your wings this morning, God Almighty. I speak excellence over them in everything that they do. I speak excellence in your thinking, Mr. Thomas. Excellence in your thinking and how you apply your knowledge to share with the, the students. I speak excellence over the teachers this morning. And I speak excellence over the students. I pray right now that for every person under the sound of my voice who know that there is something special upon their life, but just need somebody to encourage them, that God, you will visit them this morning. Give them that push that they need. Inspire them to do well. Inspire them to aspire for greater. Inspire them to go to their next level, Father. I pray that Fern Court will continue to excel continue to shine, continue to be an example for other schools. I pray right now that your Holy Spirit will rest upon every person who is watching this morning and that, Father God, this will be a season of excellence. Anything that the enemy is planning against the school, against the administrators, against the students, we cancel and nullify it this morning. And we pray that this shall be a blessed season for them. This shall be a season, mighty God, where they shall flourish and prosper. Everything that is good and wonderful, bring it into the school, bring it into their lives. Cover them this morning, God Almighty, and take them to their next level in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Well, a powerful prayer indeed. I mean, I know you can pray like that, so that's after after to pray this Let's morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to call upon you again at some point throughout this year, because what we want to do here at the school is that we want our past students to come in and uh, have discussion with our current students, let them understand how they can do it, because if the past student can do it, they also can do it. So I want to, to share at some other point. I will probably pass on information to our guidance counselors too, because I know there are times in which you have psychosocial sessions. And I know you're also an empowerment coach. So I'm going yes, to use I you am. up some more. That, that's uh -huh. a whole thing with technology, at least. Yes. A, a person can be anywhere across the world. We're still connecting. Yes, yes. So thank you for sharing with us this morning. You reminded yeah. us that we must have the spirit of excellence in all that we do. That's right. That's and I right. see one of my colleagues have heard that. Hard man for dead. I think you make some mention that hard word for dead. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I got to... <laughs> good, good. Hard man for dead. Yes. So we all appreciate you sharing the word with us this morning and just continue. To, we will pray for you and you also continue to pray for us because we know we're living in a challenging time COVID-19 yes. and so forth but with God all things are possible that's right that's right and new opportunities will come out of the adversity so keep your eyes open for them all right thank you again bless you you're welcome okay. good good all right um, now I'm going to end but before we go I just want to to leave with you our national anthem, get ready for the playing of the national anthem. the love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body, and the service of my fellow students, I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace, to work diligently and creatively, to think generously and honestly, so that Jamaica may under God, increasing beauty, fellowship and prosperity, and play her part in advancing the welfare of the whole human race.
politics of the whole human race, of the whole human race. All right, so have a safe weekend, everyone, and join me back on Monday at 8 a.m. where we have another guest speaker who will share the word with you.